Hey guys, when you're working with a lender or a broker on a commercial loan, one item you want to pay close attention to is prepayment penalties. Overlooking this would be a very expensive mistake if you want to shorten your refinance period or make a significant reduction to your loan balance. For those that aren't familiar, prepayment penalties aren't just seen in residential mortgages. These prepayment penalties are regularly seen in the loans that many of you out there are making. That's commercial loans, you know, loans for properties with five or more units. Before we go into some of the fees and the penalties, let's go into the reason why they actually charge us in the first place. So the primary reason lenders charge penalties is to recoup the cost of the loan if there's a change to the payoff of the term. So you'll notice that banks won't charge you a higher interest rate or points as like a hard money lender would, all right? The penalty is in place so they can get that money back if you terminate the loan earlier than they expected, you know, whether it's through a refinance or just paying off the outstanding principal amount. A lender wants to keep the performing loan on their books. All right, that's the long and short of it. When the loan is paid off early, it introduces uncertainty in the forecast. They put these fees in place to keep the loan underneath their, their roof and keep it cash flowing, the same way that you're looking for cash flow when you buy the property. Now, there are four common prepayment penalty structures in the commercial loan space. Uh, the first is yield maintenance. In this penalty structure, the lender will charge you the interest as if you had made the payments for the entire period. That's if you, if you stop it early, if you pay it off early. They will calculate the net present value of the interest and then hit you up for that amount at closing. You know, this one is fairly common. Number two, defeasance. Now, this was primarily used by insurance companies. Basically, instead of paying cash to the lender, this option allows you to exchange the note with another cash flowing asset. If you're doing this, the new collateral is usually much less riskier than the original commercial real estate asset. You know, there is a much longer explanation to all this, but doing all this is not cheap, nor is it easy. This is primarily seen if a loan has been bundled with other loans and sold as a debt security, uh, as a commercial mortgage backed security. Chances are you're not going to see this in your loan docs, but just be aware that it's out there. Number three, the step down. Now, this one is actually quite simple and it's quite common as well. You'll probably run into this one. In this case, the lender will put up a prepayment fee schedule and it'll decline over time. So, for example, let's say you have a, a 3 2 1 scenario, you'll, you'll, wanna, you'll have to pay 3% of the loan amount in, in year one if you cancel it early, 2% uh, in year two, and 1% in year three. Now, if you're doing a refi with that lender that has this provision, they will sometimes waive the penalty if you keep the loan with them. So be sure to ask about that up front and get it in writing as well. Number four, the lockout. Now, this one's rare to see. It doesn't allow for any prepayment at all during the specified period. So let's say you have a 10-year loan without a contractual ability to prepay or a lockout in the first six years of that loan. There will be no option to refinance or even sell the property during that time. So as you can imagine, this will not work for us in the world of commercial real estate. So avoid the lockout provision if it just comes up for whatever reason. And again, it's not very common, but know that it exists. There are many lenders with good rates and no prepayment penalties. You will see this with lenders that offer floating rates, right? So depending on where we are in the economic cycle, you may be comfortable doing this. Personally, I like to fix my rate because I, I want to know what to expect out of a monthly payment and know what my NOI was going to be. So for me, that kind of certainty is very important. There will sometimes be room for negotiating a penalty. So when you are presented with a term sheet, review it closely. You know, have your partners take a look at it as well and look for those prepayment penalties. If you need flexibility because the deal that you're working on, you know, for example, you're doing a three-year refi distributing to your investors, then a five-year step down won't work for you unless you are prepared to pay for those extra fees, right? You know, telling the lender what you want as far as your plan is concerned is very important. You can push for a prepayment penalty that you can commit to by swapping it out for another penalty type.
as well. That's another option. You know, perhaps you'd be fine with a three-year yield maintenance, then sell it at the beginning of year four. That may be a thing for you. Or eliminate the entire prepayment altogether and bump up the rate a little bit. You know, this may actually be a better choice depending on the property and what you plan on doing with it and what the business plan is. You know, lenders like to mitigate risk whenever they can. And by offering a prepayment a mechanism that suits your needs, they are more likely to accept and help you get the deal closed. Anyway, have you ever been hit with prepayment fees? You know, have you heard of the ones I spoke about today? Let me know in the comments. I would actually love to hear from you. And of course, if you like this content, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And also check out the Bulletproof Cashflow podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. And don't forget to check out the YouTube channel as well and subscribe. So we're working to get new content out to you guys every day and help you build success in the world of multifamily. Uh, be great, guys, and talk to you soon. Bye.